morning from here in Seattle. Uh, hello and welcome to the common mistakes when using libcurl and how to fix them webinar presented by Daniel Stenberg, who is curl's author and maintainer uh, at Wolf SSL. My name is Kajal and I will be moderating the webinar. All attendees will be in listen only mode. There will, however, be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, so please feel free to enter any questions uh, into the Q&A box to be addressed during the Q&A time. This webinar will also be recorded and made available via a link following the presentation. And now, without further ado, I present Daniel. Hi, and welcome, everyone. Uh, yeah, I, I went with this dramatic car crash. Uh, common mistakes when using libcurl. So let's, um, yeah, I'm Daniel Stenberg. I've been doing uh, curl uh, development for a long time. Um, yeah, I started the project back in 1998. And in this um, presentation, uh, yeah, I work for both SSL as mentioned, uh, and uh, we do curl support. So if you need help with curl, you know how to contact. So I actually, well, I, I, libcurl was created back in 2000. So we had a few years without libcurl when we only had curl, the command line tool. and since since we had libcurl, we've basically remained having the same API and we've grown with it and we have, have a stable API that we don't break and, and people are using it and so on. So we've been using it for a long time. And over these years, I've, um, since we don't break behavior and we don't break backwards compatibility, we don't basically don't, don't change the API. And therefore some of the choices we've done over the years maybe haven't been the best, but at least it also gives us a long time to record you know, patterns in, in behavior and mistakes and what, what we see people are doing repeatedly when using libcurl. And that's what brought me to this idea of making this little webinar about trying to um, collect the most common libcurl mistakes that I've seen or that I can recall people are doing. So I'm going to run through 15 of them, the, the being documentation, return codes from libcurl API calls, the verbose option, there's a curl go in it, how to do redirects, a, the HTTP method, certificate checks, zero termination of strings, and yeah, C++ strings as well. Something about threading the signal things and how to do static builds on, on Windows. Should you let your users set the URL when you're working with libcurl? how about the callback invokes and what about C++ methods? So a bunch of them. And I'll try to not linger around too long for each one of them, because as I said, and you can count, there's 15 of them here. And I'm going to just get into them, describe them and, and s talk a little about them to give you a feel that, um, and I think in all of these cases, anyone who's who's listening to this or watching this or read the slides afterwards, they can all agree that, sure, we can see why these are mistakes, but, um, and they really, of course, shouldn't happen, but still, they they keep happening. And uh, sure, there's a Q&A in the end. So whatever question you have, type it in into the Q&A thing during the, my talk or, or do it afterwards or whatever. And we can uh, do the Q&A for, for as long as there's questions to ask afterwards. So why are these mistakes made? Uh, sure, that's a tricky question to, to answer, of course, and all, all um, I mean, all cases are special and individual and we're all unique and so on, but humans are lazy by nature, of course. So we're all, I mean, we're all guilty of that, right? Trying to make shortcuts, getting things done in time, maybe not do more than we have to and, and so on. And we're pressured and we need to deliver and there are deadlines and so on. And we also then are easily led into copy and pasting code and, and examples from, uh, as I call them, questionable sources, maybe sources that aren't really vetted. You got to, you Google it and you paste the, f or you copy and paste the first hit you find and it works for a while. Maybe you didn't really consider the consequences. And of course, documentation is hard from, from my or for the curl projects. And then it's hard to write documentation that really considers everything for the user. And without drowning the user in documentation, and if you drown them in documentation, then you can expect that the user won't find the particular details they need because it's just too much or, or wrongly formatted or, or hard to index or whatever. And 
Ultimately, internet transfers are complicated. There are a lot of, Curl supports a lot of protocols. There are a lot of subtle details when, when using all these protocols and the servers are, you know, are being picky or particular at times. So you need to sort of adjust your end to the other end. And there's an internet that is wild in between and you need to everything to work and, and so on. And yeah, maybe, just maybe the curl way isn't always the smartest. As I said, we've, we have this organic way of developing curl, so and we try no, and never to break behavior, which means that if we come up with a way and we introduce it at some point in time, we stick to that. Even if sometimes perhaps we did it in a way that turned out to be not the most clever way perhaps into the future, but now we've done, done it that way and we stick to it. So number one, First, uh, this, is, this is such an obvious thing, right? But skipping the documentation will lead to badness. And of course, they, we see this all the time because we have a lot of options in, in libcurl and they have plain English names, which leads, it leads users to believe that you know what the option does because you can read the name, right? And you can understand what it does based on the name. But the name is a short one, right? And we try to make them short and sort of uh, to the point but do you really know the subtle little details? No, very often you just presume that just because you understand the option name, you think it does what it do, what it says because you want it to do that. But uh, yeah, and you copy and paste it from somewhere, but there are also details and you know, the devil is always in the details. So maybe you, you set that single option that says something, it's a Boolean, but what exactly does that mean? So by skipping that documentation and not reading up what the op option actually does, just assuming that you know what it does, that leads to sadness. And in, in the curl project, we have a lot of documentation and the documentation is, well, <laughs> according to me, <laughs> really good in, in, in most cases and, and really in depth and everything, mostly everything at least, is well and thoroughly documented. And we have uh, over 100 standalone uh, examples if you want to just get an existing vetted proven to work example but examples are also tricky i'll get into that later and of course consider which docs you rely to when you read the doc when you and when you do read the documentation read the correct documentation right uh, not it's not necessarily true just because it ends up the first hit on on google right uh, and for some reason a lot of stock stack overflow answers tend to be re very highly rated on st uh, on google for example uh, so that's about documentation. Number two, going forward, um, <clears throat> a very common thing, failure to check return codes. And here, back to the examples, we do this in our examples a lot of time. In the, here, here's a snippet from an example we host on the curl website. Uh, this, this is just a, a, an example of using the libcurl API. Here's setting four different options and, and uh, not caring at all about what these functions return. So we have no idea if any of them fail, right? In this particular case, in this example we see on the screen here, these options <clears throat> probably never fail, but how do you know? And if, if you're uh, if you never used libcurl before, or if you don't know what to expect from them, you really must check that the options you use actually don't return errors, because if they return error, that's a signal for you that you should investigate or check it out or something that's just so often we get a problem reported by a user and a user asks something why doesn't this work or what happens when i do this and we ask the, the person to just check the return code from the function and said oh it returned a failure and the failure said not built in or couldn't do that or this or that and just the return code name is usually enough to give you a certain amount of clues to to move on and and and, and, and I mean, solve the problem or read up on the documentation again and figure out, oh, right, you had to do that for this option to work. So you really need that. So to understand why things don't work with curl, you, because they don't sometimes, you just need to check the return codes. And I mean, really, that's the way you should do programming anyway, right? If a function returns success or an error, you need to check for the error. Uh, <coughs> going forward, uh, similar to that one, what happens, sometimes you end up in a situation, you're writing a, a cur a, a, an application using libcurl, you check return codes, you don't get an error, but 
for some reason, whatever you thought you were doing with your program, it doesn't do what it, you want it to do. Why doesn't it work? And you sit there and, and getting all up in arms and you email uh, an angry email to the curve mailing list, but you forgot to set the verbose, verbose option because the verbose option is really helping you to answer getting figuring out the things like why doesn't it work what what does curl actually do under the hood when you do you, you try your your uh, internet transfer so you really need to remember to set the verbose option at least when you try to figure out why curl is misbehaving right set the verbose option to one it's a long so it's the capital l here it's a boolean zero or one you can just set it to one value and it's the verbose or not verbose <clears throat> so by setting it to verbose you get a lot of extra output to standard air and uh, you will see a lot of details a particular in particular for the TLS certificate and and the more headers and stuff being sent back and forth between the client and the server it, and it is really helpful for you to understand what's going on and to debug and, and uh, track down problems or, or misbehaviors or, or figure out nuisances or just weird and un, un, uh, behaviors and of course in a similar fashion you want to set the error buffer option as well which is a way to tell curl that here's a buffer for you to pr um, fill in an error reason when you return an error so even if you because sometimes that single error code is, is just a number right between 0 and uh, 95 or whatever it is um, maybe that's not uh, given that doesn't give you enough clues so then you can give provide curl with this error buffer that curl can then write in an errors, error message into when it returns an error and that's of course much more uh, likely to help you with additional clues when something th something goes wrong <clears throat> and here's a classic one we get this uh, once in a while uh, um, right <laughs> uh, so if you don't use the verbose option you, you can end up in a funny situation like this one of my, one of my favorite things uh, you run your app and you get this back right error blah 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 how do you know if this was a libcurl error or maybe it's the content from the server uh, that's returning uh, this uh, this is the content from the server or is it an error from your app maybe libcurl and of course it's usually when it's written like this in this particular screenshot example you don't really know it might be your local app that shows an error it might be the content from the server that just contains this string <coughs> and of course by adding uh, enabling verbose you'll be able to see exactly if it's part of the protocol or if it's an uh, actual error from libcurl or uh, even an error from your application I think there's a famous server somewhere that, that people are using that sometimes shows this. So we get this particular um, error reported every now and then for, for the same server. And sure, I would even suggest that if you're using libcurl in an application or device in production, maybe have a way to toggle on the debug option. I mean, not for ordinary users, but maybe some secret way to do it to just enable you to debug things uh, in production. And, or even remotely or, or stuff like that to help you understand what's going on with your with your customer systems or, or your remote application applications installations or something and of course you can redirect this output that you get from from the verbose option to it's sent to standard air I told you but there's another option that can redirect standard air to somewhere else or you can even go with the implementing the debug function callback and then you would get you will get all the verbose uh, messages to that uh, callback instead of get, getting sent to the standard error. So then you can, I don't know, uh, incorporate into your regular uh, application logging or, or things like that, or whatever you think it's suitable for your application. That's verbose. One of the little things we added to the project, actually we didn't have it from the beginning, we, got, we added it a few years in, years in it, that's a global init function. So you need to init global <laughs> libcurl globally before you use it. And if you don't do it, curl easy perform or other another perform function will do it for you. So in many cases, it doesn't matter. 
but it also means that you don't really you can't really control what it will do you will just rely on the default implicit behavior which um uh, which of course it doesn't call then the, the opposite function curl global cleanup so if you would for example run a, a memory leak tool you'd see that curl might leak memory because you don't call the global cleanup and and of course that that's not a huge problem but there are other more uh, subtle things that happens when you don't call the curl global in it um, and that is in particular because the curl global in it is not thread safe so you need to call curl global in it on itself uh, securely in its own thread or main i mean not from more than one thread at the same time at least and uh, well it is not thread safe because of what i call legacy and reasons of course here and it will hopefully become thread safe one day but it isn't right now so <clears throat> you need to call global init first and you need to call global uh, cleanup last that's just the way it is to make sure that uh, if you want to make sure that your lib curl inits are perfectly thread safe um, so that you don't have any problems and of course there there are challenges with doing global init um, completely alone without any other doing it in particular in plugin scenarios and so on but still that's the that's the, the way global init works right now when you do when you use lib curl in a um, HTTP surrounding and uh, uh, we let's admit it most people use libcurl with HTTP uh, at least fairly regularly and when you use HTTP you have this redirect concept which I'm showing you an example here is this is an example of an HTTP 1.1 um, redirect so it means that you get a 300 something return code in the top line here you can see it um, it's a 301 in this case and then there's a location header down there showing the new location where where the server tells the client to go instead of whatever you got in the first place it's a really it's commonly used within with http of course and libcurl supports uh, following redirects automatically so you don't have to care about it you just tell libcurl to follow them and it'll do that but you need to consider the consequences of doing this <clears throat> and um, for example, what protocols will you allow libcurl to follow to? Since that's a, you saw that the location colon header, it specifies a full URL. Well, it can specify a full URL. So it's, it tells the client, go over here to this URL instead, which could be another protocol, another server, and, and somewhere else. And if you're not in control of the server you're talking to, which in many cases you aren't, you know that that server can very well point another, well, it, as I said, it can change protocol, it can change ports, it can do anything. So you really need to um, consider that when you, when you just blindly allow redirects. And of course, you don't. <laughs> you also don't want to set a custom HTTP method when you follow redirects because that return code that uh, three, I saw in, in the example, I showed in the example the 301, or it can also be 302, 303, 307, 308, a few different ones. I think there are five redirects. Uh, ah, it doesn't matter. There are, at least there are different, and they also have different meanings to the client if, if um, whether it should change the HTTP method or not in the follow-up request in the second request or third or fourth and if you set a custom HTTP method with curl it will use that custom method in all requests even following the redirect and that is a very common way for disaster and uh, and uh, support questions why doesn't curl uh, adhere to the re response code blah 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 and sure, it, it adheres to the response code perfectly well, but not if you override th th that choice. More about that in a second. You can actually also, I didn't mention it here, but you, yeah, right, as I said, limit what protocols to allow redirects. I mentioned it here. And it's there's an, there's an option for libcurl that says, uh, it's called curl opt read the protocols, which specifies to which protocols protocol schemes really you allow redirects and you should really limit that to, auction, to to only 
those particular schemes you want redirects to. Which might be HTTPS only, perhaps HTTP as well, but still. There's also, you can also handle redirects manually by not letting curl do the redirects and only read out the information from libcurl and then filter the redirect URL yourself before you go on to the redirected redirect to URL. So, and similarly, there's also a danger here. We see people that write applications when you let the user specify the URL or parts of the URL, maybe in a config file, maybe in a, a form field somewhere. But <clears throat> when you do that, when you let the user specify a URL for, for whatever reason, you need to remember that, of course, a URL means it doesn't mean, it doesn't imply HTTP or HTTPS. It could be other schemes. And curl supports right now 25 different schemes. So it could be SMTP, it could be POP3, it could be uh, a lot of different protocols. And if you didn't, if you didn't expect or didn't plan for that, maybe you should limit what, what protocols to use or which host names you want to, um, the, the user's URL to identify, right? Because maybe the user will use a URL that uh, goes to a more a malicious server or a server that tries to fool you, maybe with a funny redirect, maybe whatever. Uh, and another little thing is that we've been hurt by in the past is if you let users set the URL or other fields in the URL, maybe they can specify very, 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 very long input fields. And that might also lead to unhappy f um, situations. In, in the in the curl case we've had security problems when you actually when you passed in <laughs> passwords longer than two gigabytes which of course uh, i expect is and was always fairly rare but as long as you of course as, as always when you have user input there's a risk for abuse and, and malicious users to play tricks with you so limit the scopes re re uh, reduce which protocols, which schemes you allow in the URLs and you whitelist and filter stuff. And maybe just uh, let the user set the limited parts of the URL so that you're, you don't get a surprise uh, server or port number or scheme or whatever. And again, setting the HTTP method, when you, you do this with, you do that with this option, the curl opt custom request. And it's very popular to use because people constantly uh, I don't know exactly how it came to be, but people think that this does something that it doesn't. It's rarely actually you, I mean, you, you very rarely need to use it. The most, most options in curl actually has an implied method, HTTP method. You just, you ask curl to do something and it'll pick the method to use by itself. You don't normally specify which method to use it. It will just know. So when you, it's just when, when that choice is the wrong choice that you need to use this option. And it's, that should be rare. So whatever, whenever you see this option used in your program, go back and reconsider that do you really need it? Because when you use it, it is often leading to sad faces because when you use this, for example, as I mentioned before, when you do redirects, follow-up request will also use that custom request and that is not often <laughs> that is often not what you want because it's cu the custom request will not change libcurse behavior it will only change the request in the actual http method number eight so we're uh, past mid mid term mid uh, ways there are 15 different uh, things I wanted to mention. So, and there's a, here's a classic, of course, this, uh, the disabled certificate checks mistake. It's so common, it's almost uh, boring by now, but people do this in their applications. Uh, in libcurl, there are two different options to, to disable the certificate checks. One disable the hostname check, one disable the check for the digital signature. So when you do this in your application or whatever you write, it is just completely wrong. So you should really, really never let that through into production because it will practically make your HTTPS or other TLS-based um, um, well communication completely insecure because um, 
when you don't verify the server's certificate, you don't know that you're talking to the right server, so you could be talking to a man in the middle. So you never ever ship this in production. And no, HTTPS is not secure if you don't do this. So there's, I, I face this misconception over and over again that yes, you get it encrypted with even when you disable the checks, but the encryption isn't worth anything if you're talking to the bad guy and the bad guy sits between you and the actual server. So uh, it, it, it doesn't help you. It might be a short term hack to get your stuff going while in development or whatever, but you really should never let it through into production or in any actual use outside of the first initial attempts. And of course, this also goes for HTTPS proxies, and which is maybe not as commonly used, but you, when you use proxies, HTTP proxies is one way to do things, but HTTPS proxies is another. Then you speak TLS to the proxy itself and then you might actually talk TLS through the proxy as well but that goes with so when you talk to an HTTPS proxy you also want to make sure that you verify the proxy certificate talking about SCP and SFTP which Curl also supports of course they're slightly different because they don't have certificates in the same way so you, you don't actually verify certificates with SCP and SFTP so in that case you have you have to verify their server uh, fingerprints which I'm not going into here because that's not as, at all as uh, frequently misunderstood or, or mistaken. Possibly because it's a, they are much f less frequently used protocols, possibly because it's uh, more easily understood or I don't know. So verify certificates always. Um, <clears throat> It does bring the problem to your devices and pro programs, and of course, how to handle the CA store. How do you get those certificates to use to verify your server with and update them if, you're, if you have a long living product or long living device? How do you handle that? It's complicated. Um, and one alternative is to use the pin public key, which then actually um, verifies your public key. Uh, with a fingerprint instead of uh, using the CS store. And here's another little subtle thing when which comes to the lib curl being written in C and it provides an API in C and people are writing applications in C. And uh, as you do that, people tend to assume that when you get data that looks like a string, it will be zero terminated. But in, the ca in this case, in, in, in libcurl, we provide data to applications as a, as a callback, as a callback in the right function. And there's another callback header function, basically. So you can get, for example, when you get a HTTP response, you get the, the headers in the header function, you get the body in the right function, just to make it easier for, for the application to separate headers from the body. Anyway, you get that data into the callbacks and you get a pointer to the, to the data and uh, it looks like this. Here's, a, here's the callback example. Here's the, it's called write callback here in, in this example. And the data pointer here is the first argument. It gets the data. And the, it actually has a size and a member variables here because that's, it's, uh, it's based on the f write function originally. So it has the same prototype as the f write. And the, the fourth argument, the user p, is just a user pointer set by the application so libcurl doesn't set it it just passes it on from the application but anyway the first pointer is the data pointer so when you get for example if you download an html page from an uh, from a web server it will look like text right so people will very often assume that you get this as a zero terminated string which we don't provide in curl because it might as well just be binary so if you d download html it looks like a string right but if you download a png that's a binary image it won't be text it's a it's just a pointer to the data you get and there's other the two argument two and three here is the size of the data so the typical mistake looks like this <laughs> i know I, i'm doing you this <laughs> favor here by showing you this bad example but maybe i should put the red cross on top of it uh, from the beginning so basically you get the data and it looks like text and you might actually be fooled to use like printf or strucomp or other c-based functions that are 
or structure I, I don't it's hard, they're hard to pronounce these functions they're not really meant to pronounce but anyway they um, all these functions they operate on c strings and c strings are data terminated b with a zero byte but in this case the data is not terminated by zero byte it is has a length given in argument two and three so a lot of people then do things like printf their copy or still and it will work at times because who knows what follows the data in the memory it usually then just ends up getting some garbage every now and then at the end of the data and people are very confused and sometimes of course you get a crash and when you run a debugger it behaves completely differently of course using valgrind or, or uh, uh, um, address sanitizer in your compiler will point out the problem pretty soon but still it's, it's a common mistake similarly going into the strings world c++ strings are not c strings and this is a fun thing because libcurl provides a c api and you know people always and commonly think that c and c++ are similar or you know often bundled together and associated as if they were the same language you know c slash c++ and yet they are also different and they're different in some fundamental parts that's enough to cause problems and this is actually this common mistake the c++ strings are not c strings this is so common so this is one of the top problems seen on like stack overflow and, and other sites because c++ users like to use the, the string types and this st std colon colon string is one is the standard one but um, c++ users tend to make up their own strings and, and there's a lot of strings types uh, as objects and classes for C++ users, but they are not C strings and libcurl is a C API. And here's here's the thing here that the the option that were sorry, the function you set strings with primarily in, in libcurl is the curl easy setup. Basically you set options. There are 270 different options you can set in libcurl today. A bunch of them, maybe 50 of them, maybe maybe almost 100 of them takes a string right but uh, a lot of the other options take uh, other kinds of uh, options so you can set a boolean or a long number or and uh, other things and you can do that thanks to this function taking a var arg as the third option and the var arg can't be type checked correctly but in the c language so therefore it doesn't it can't really check that you're actually passing on the correct type of of the string which leads to the compiler not being able to properly warn and, and you know highlight the problem when you do that in your program so you can easily let it through and you get runtime problems instead of build time problems and here's a perfect example of some bad code wrong bad keep the url here you you know you you provide a url you keep it as a c++ string object like this you create this and here's an example.com url and you want to pass it to curl right and this will actually compile them because it's a var arg so curl the compiler doesn't actually know to forbid you from doing this but it's wrong wrong right because this is a string c++ string object libcurl doesn't know about c++ string objects has had it has no idea it comes out as a uh, well usually it causes a crash i think May possibly it causes some random junk to appear in the string because this is the way you should do it you should you can keep it in your C++ string object perfectly fine but you need to extract the C string from that and provide that to curl like in this case the C underscore, um, C underscore str method within that object <clears throat> and that way you make curl happy and your your application is happy and we're all good very common mistake C++ is not C libcurl is C and really we don't i don't think there's any huge um, popular binding for c++ for libcurl either so l most lib uh, sorry most c++ users using libcurl go with the c api directly so this is something um, lots of c++ users have ran into 11 closing in here threading mistakes I told you before, um, code global init isn't thread safe. But there are also some other so caveats, caveats when when doing threaded libcurl, and they're not really hard. They're, they're not 
hard to follow. And of course, you think like there's no locking in libcurl, so you can't concurrently use the same handle in multiple threads. And before OpenSSL released 1.1.0, there you needed to set up mutex callbacks with OpenSSL itself, because otherwise OpenSSL w uh, would <laughs> crash or cause you grievances or sort of, yeah, it would really drive you to tears. So if you use an older OpenSSL, you need mutex callbacks set. Not fun. So upgrade your OpenSSL much f better. And as I said before, Carl Global Inet is not thread safe. If you just keep to this, these three basic rules, you'll be happy and you won't have mistakes. Right, the Carl Global Inet will be thread safe at one point. Hopefully not too long into the future. There's an option called curl up no signal in curl. It's um, it's been there for a long time and it's hard to understand what is signals. When do you? I, I don't think we helped anyone by having this negative, sort of reversed option. You set the no signal to true to not have it handle signals. Basically, signals is a Unix concept. So if you're not on a Unix system, you can pretty much ignore it anyway. But but. Um, a lot of people are on Unix like systems like Linux or, or BSDs or, or uh, other flavors. And it's basically a binary flag or, or sort of bit coming in. And it it's sort of interrupts everything. It says an incoming signal. Here it is. And it's complicated in multi threaded worlds where when an outsider sends a an, an, uh, signal because it's complicated to which thread it arrives to and it's complicated to handle. Um, signals and it's especially hard for i didn't mention it here but <coughs> for a library because the library might cause signals that your application isn't aware of or vice versa so and actually curl really wants to avoid to use signals so if, if it was up to me curl would never cause any signals because I, I th signals are only making things hard and complicated so if we could all avoid signals i would be a happier person but if you for example if you build curl with the synchronous name resolver which is the the way you do name resolving if you don't use threads and you don't if you don't want to use threads and you don't want to use c iris for name resolving in curl you go with the stock synchronous name resolver and that's that's a synchronous name resolver call, right? And that might be very slow at times. So you can actually, if you set a timeout with curl, it'll actually set, um, ask for a signal to arrive if it's too slow. So if it takes 10 seconds to resolve a host name, kill me. And then libcurl will receive a signal arm signal, abort this, the name lookup and return. So that's one way curl will actually trigger a signal. Um, Another thing that uh, can happen is that if you, uh, if we use OpenSSL, for example, uh, there's no way for us to avoid that OpenSSL sometimes try to write data to a closed connect to a closed socket, and that causes a SIG pipe to happen in the uh, within the the process, and that's why. Uh, when uh, when libcurl typically tries to ignore sigpipe when you build with OpenSSL and uses OpenSSL to make sure that your application never sees this this signal because it's completely unnecessary it doesn't help us and there's no way for us to uh, prevent OpenSSL from triggering that so if you set no signal you basically ask libcurl hands off everything that has to do with signals so libcurl will not do anything to trigger signals it won't use alarm so it won't abort slow synchronous name resolves but it also won't set any uh, sig handler so it won't ignore sig pipe either so if you get a sig pipe from OpenSSL, the applic your application will get that signal you need to do that uh, you need to provide the sig handler to an because if you don't uh, take care of the received signal your application will simply abort when you get it so signals, an annoying part of um, yeah, uh, Unix uh, libcurl yeah. application, I think. Going into the Windows world instead, people forget this little option. You need to define this define when you build uh, your lib. 
when you use libcurl as a static library and you build your application you need to define this define otherwise you get uh, link time errors and it's really a common mistake and it's not easy to understand and it's i really don't like that we have this situation but we have it and we haven't got any good fix for it so we're living with it and uh, if you're building on windows this is something you need to remember if you build with a static libcurl if you build with a static libcurl already you've already set this define because if you don't you get libcurl you get uh, link errors and basically it seems that building with a li uh, static libcurl is very popular on windows i'm not sure exactly why but on windows it seems like more more or less everyone wants to do it with a static libcurl rather than a shared one uh, a dll one basically you need to set this define when you build your application with libcurl because we need to tell the compiler which which way you um, basically how you provide uh, symbols or it needs this little instruction to the compiler basically for the each function each public function that libcurl provides so if you don't provide if you don't set this define you will end up with link errors because uh, it'll, it'll do the wrong assumption uh, but also when you do a static build you build your application with a static libcurl it also means that you need to do the chasing of dependencies and this is also an, uh, another problem that people end up with all the time so libcurl can be built with and, and use a lot of third-party dependencies i think i think the total count of third-party dependencies you can use is 32 maybe you don't use 32 in your builds but maybe use three or four and each of those dependencies might use dependencies of their own so when you build with static libcurl you need to provide all those static other dependencies on when linking and that's really hard and it so sure um, the curl build scripts they actually help you a little bit on the way but you still might need to chase around uh, third-party dependencies a lot when linking uh, statically and <laughs> the annoying part is that it might also change then between versions or when you upgrade the dependency versions they too might change so linking statically is uh, is a bit of a pain related to the c++ strings thing i mentioned before people also like uh, you know methods of course when they write c++ when we write c++ we use methods in class and they look classes and they look like functions but they cannot be used like a c function just uh, like that right since they're they're a member of a class and and if you if you instantiate an object you have a this pointer in methods pointing to your current um, object right and uh, it doesn't work like that so if for example here, here's a here's a c plus 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 method that works so if you like in this case you write a callback here's the transfer info function callback and you set it to uh, call one of your functions it's a c++ method actually and in this case it's a static method which means that it doesn't get any this pointer but you instead pass on the this pointer in the in the data pointer option here so you and then you sort of convert it by static casting it and then you call the non-static function so you can do this funny uh, work around dance to get it working and uh, you just need to remember basically is is enough to remember that you cannot pass in just a c++ class method and expect it to work because it's a c api another funny thing is when you ask for content to get returned by libcurl you p provide this is the last one the last uh, common mistake i bet there are more some of these are maybe not as common as the others but sure when you get data from libcurl you get that provided in a callback that i mentioned before already the write function it, it's uh, from the uh, angle of the libcurl writes so libcurl writes the data to the anyone who writes it to, to to the local disk or memory and it's delivered by the callback and some people actually assume that this then would write the entire response or something but while it's actually you know iterating through the response and it will call the f the callback one 
well, maybe not none no times maybe not at all if it fails right or one if it's a small uh content or a thousand times or hundreds of thousands of times if it's really really huge content so you can never ever assume that you will get any certain amount of data in each call or that you will get any particular amount of calls because it'll vary depending on your network and your your machine performance uh, everything and one of your users will get a completely different set of callback numbers than another user depending on all those uh, different things of nature so don't assume and of course everything this most of this is more or less written in stone but a lot of this can we can help users by improving documentation and we can improve pro by providing better apis and so on into the future and of course you can help by helping us in the project and me in particular understand what we've done wrong and right and sort of where to go next so your feedback is always valuable and and is interesting and, and your code and whatever your bug reports so we rely on your help always Whew, that was it I, I went a little longer than i wanted to but uh, another thing documentation i mentioned the first common mistake i've tried to document basically much everything you need to know ever about curl in this book everything curl it's on this url there you will find a lot of tutorial like explanations for for using curl lib curl and a lot of details around it it's a work in progress it'll never get done but it's a lot of content there already at least so that was what i wanted to say <coughs> Whew, i talked a lot i talked fast uh, maybe some of you haven't fallen, fallen asleep yet but uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot. Um, so there are no open questions. I take that as an uh, indication that you all fell asleep or just went away and left the computer on. <coughs> but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I will after this talk the the video will be online soon i will also post the the, the slides um, somewhere uh, available uh, so i will probably make a blog post uh, linking both the video and the slides of course so yeah um okay the uh, here here's the first question i'll go with what's a good list of things i'm supposed to be so supposed to do as a default setup Ooh, that's a good question actually in in general in general most of most of the things curl you should do as an application curl should do by itself so if you're if you're happy with the def if you don't need if you don't change anything curl should do the default um, behavior securely and safe by default right so uh, n don't do anything if you don't have to but when you change things just be sure that you're actually you know change the right things and change it for the right reasons and and don't just assume that uh, things are, d uh, are the way because you read it on on a, the wrong site um we actually try to make a really big effort to make sure that our default behavior is safe and secure but you can use curl in a lot of different situations right and and we don't know what your particular use case is so you need to check it out if curl doesn't do the way you want it to do by default change it um yes so uh, any any plans for better cmake support it's a good question yeah uh, <laughs> so the cmake is a little bit of a uh well forgotten stepchild in the in the project so <coughs> I want to have better CMake support in curl, but it's also um, it's a big challenge. I'm not I'm not myself personally very uh, into CMake from the beginning. I've never learned it, so for me it's a sort of a foreign language. I speak very badly, even I, with an even stronger accent than I speak English. So, and I, that means that I pretty much always end up with fixing the. Uh, order tool builds and everything first to make sure that works and then you know oh right i need to fix the cmake and then go there and i don't understand it so i, I m make it slightly bad and it maybe works something like that uh, and then i have to rely on uh, 
on, on uh, you know uh, others to help me out with that and that doesn't always work right so it ends up we end up in a situation where the cmake support is always lagging behind the the order tools and the configure set is much more complete and much more reliable i don't know really how to fix it because uh, it's I, I i don't have more hours and energy in the day to do that so if you want to if you wanted to really help me support better cmake you help me by buying support and i will help you support cmake much better so the cmake variables conflict with uh, with c aris yeah that's a good question i, I didn't i wasn't aware of that um <clears throat> i uh, that seems like uh, bugs. If if that's true, you should f just submit them as bugs, possibly in both curl and and C -ARIS, because sh surely they shouldn't uh, conflict. That seems like uh, just plain bugs. We should fix that. I uh, uh, have a C plus plus binding for libcurl. Yeah, I actually have a. Um, the the question is, are there plans to have a C plus plus binding to libcurl? So um, I mentioned it in my roadmap for 2020 for libcurl if you haven't seen that you could go and, and see that we did that as a webinar uh, i think a few weeks ago a month uh, so that's one possible thing to work on during 2020 so i've been sort of trying to fish for interest and, and see what people want or are interested in because my impression is that n there was never any really popular well used official C++ binding that everyone went with. In, in a lot of languages, there sort of just grew one binding that everyone used for that particular language. But for C++, that seemed to never really happen. Um, so maybe maybe that's something for us to do in the, C in the curl projects to sort of grab that task and go with it. Again, um, it's a matter of priorities. So um, I need to, it depends on, on, on what we have with you know, workload in general, and, and uh, I have to f focus on, on paying customers. So um, regarding RTSP and authentication, uh, if the just auth is requested, I also need to set RTSP as a re redirectable scheme. Why does requesting a just, the just auth not automatically also set the redirections? Uh, well, this is a bug. It's, there's an open pull request for this. Uh, but I've, I've rejected the pull request because I consider the fix wrongly done. Because handling authentication within curl is not the redirect. You, do, you shouldn't have to enable redirects to handle authentication. That's not the way we do it with HTTP. It's a mistake that you have to do that. So it's, you can, the fact that you have to do that to, to get around that problem is a workaround that works. But it's, the, it's a workaround. It's not a fix. So I want it to... I want it fixed pr the proper way internally to adjust fix authentication. So um, yeah, I, I really want, I would appreciate help with that RTSP, but RTSP is, is really a protocol that is, I'm really weak at RTSP details. So I, if you're, you're an RTSP user, uh, help me out or again, help me by getting support and I will help you gladly for this. <clears throat> They recommended OpenSSL version to use in Yocto. I would say that um, with OpenSSL, you should really go with the latest supported version they have, which I think is 1.1.1. Uh, something now, G. So because uh, yeah, they're um, they're they're providing a lot of security updates and they don't support the older versions anymore and. Uh, you have that um, threading issue with anything older than 1.1.0. So I understand that there are reasons for users to go with older versions sometimes. And I have a, a full, full sympathy for that. I don't have the complete picture and I really can't tell you if you're right or wrong when you're doing that. But I, I will, as basically all dependencies you're using within your app or with libcurl, you should usually go with a recent one for security updates and for just getting proper supports. Why was it prohibited to call API inside callbacks? For example, it is very convenient to add new transfers inside some callbacks. Um, well, 
we added that pr pr that thing just because w it ended up really complicated because when we call callbacks um you you get a callback into your applications for the within lib curl right and we have a particular state in that uh, before the callback is called and if you then call back into curl again from that callback um it was complicated to know which kind of state we had and which we didn't have so basically we took the easy way out by forbidding it by that we actually yes we moved so that we actually forced applications to instead do that logic instead of us having to do the logic P pretty much i mean for safety for for to just make it more solid and reliable behavior and also it's because it's turned out to be really hard right so what do we should we really in all callbacks should we test that each api could be called so that we don't have anything broken because our states and may link list internally and everything uh, yeah so unfortunately I, I felt that i really had to forbid forbid that to make sure that we that we remain really solid and stable as a follow-up does wolf ssl support yocto linux in arm oh oh yes so you can you we, wolf ssl we support um, we su of course we support yocto linux on anything and on arm yes of course that of course support and support if you buy support we support you whatever you run it on i would dare to promise if you don't buy support we support whatever we uh, that happens to work but most of this stuff works uh, yocto is yocto linux is just linux it's just a, a some sort of script how to build on, on, on linux and arm is a safe architecture that's tested and proven uh, everyone uses yocto linux and arm and i'm sure you can build wolf ssl all wolf ssl products you can build curl on it uh, no problem it'll and it'll be there st uh, solid and, and work really nicely for you uh you mentioned something about not being able to pass c plus plus object methods as not being supported for callbacks but static methods being okay that example also showed passing this i don't quite understand that snippet um well it, it's all it's all um yes you're right it i was a bit brief there but you know when you pass basically it goes down to when you use a c plus plus method and you call the C++ method in C++, you can always refer to this being a pointer to, to the current object. And under the hood, when the C++ compiler uh, compiles a function call in C++, it, pus it pushes that this pointer as the first argument in all function calls, right? In method calls. So it'll, it'll, call, it'll push that, you know, the first argument will be this, and then you will see the first real argument to the function as then all the other arguments. So if you do that to a C function, it will then get the this pointer as the first argument, which the, of course the C function wouldn't know what to do with it. So therefore you can't just call a, an ordinary class method, a C++ class method to, uh, yeah, it is complicated, but you could read up on it and we can discuss it on Twitter or whatever. We don't need to yeah. go on for a long time, but it is the this pointer from C++ that confuses the C code. So you have to work around it by providing the this pointer as a pointer to the user uh, custom pointer to the callback and deal with it. What is, what is, what, what is called write function callback instead of body function callback? <laughs> it, well, <laughs> I think that goes down and goes back to uh, early design choices you're right why is it called right function i think it's originally um i i viewed it as um because i think it's because the default action for the callback is is the same thing as f right so it's actually you replace f right with your callback that's why it's an right function you do the right function instead of an f right so it's a bit complicated but i think it's also water under the bridge old mistakes or old uh, decisions that we we made let's i say we because 
it feels like it was less my decision, but I think I took the decision. I think I did it like that already from the beginning. So the right function was that name in the first original version of libcurl. It's just a, it's just a name. Naming is really hard. It's hard to do the correct name and 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 you know stick to it and and be <laughs> be really happy with it. That's also why you see. Um, slightly different naming conventions in different options and so on because i've uh, you know shifted a little bit over the years in in my opinion on how to name things and how to call new options and old options and so on so no. yeah no. i think nowadays it's better to stick with the name because it's in all the documentations in, in examples and applications everywhere so it's much it's much better now to just stick to the name right function rather than introduce a new alias and call it something else because that will only confuse everyone and make it not work with all the other examples and docs from from the decades that's that have passed that's the, that's one of the good things with sticking to the same api that the documentation and the, the examples they just they're there we wrote them 20 years ago most of that they still exist we changed the api a few times the, the most recent time in time in, in 2006 so at least the api has been solid going forward uh, well, i mean not going backward uh, for 14 years so i i hope we'll be able to keep it this solid for for a long time into the future as well so there's no more questions now so i'll give you just three more seconds to answer questions and if you don't i will call it a day we're over an hour already so this was fun. Thank you for all the good questions that uh, added some extra good spice at the end. Uh, here we are in my evening. I hope you'll have a good morning wherever you are. And uh, I think I'm done for this uh, time. Yeah, thank you everybody for joining this webinar. As a reminder, please follow both Daniel and us on Twitter. Daniel, of course, is at Badger and we are at PoolFSSL. Uh, if you have any questions, you can shoot us a tweet or you can even email us at support at wolfssl.com and we'd be happy to answer any questions or comments or concerns uh, you have. Thank you so much for attending this webinar and I hope everybody stays safe and healthy today. Bye.